so she has to come along and move the damn thing so that I can't find it where it is. Now who needs the fire service? Right, so before we kick off with part 3, I'd just like to say thank you to JamieBoy1995 for pointing out something that I'd forgot to mention in part 2. I was aware of it because I had the video as a child, but I'd just forgotten to mention it, so sorry about that. And that is that there was a VHS released sometime in 1987 by Tempo Video called Children's TV Favourites, and it was an NSPCC charity video. So whoever bought the video at the time, profits from each sale of each video would have gone to the NSPCC charity. Now Fireman Sam was included on this VHS and it was the very first episode of The Kite. There are two cartoons on this video, Super Ted and Will Quack Quack, and they were both S4C cartoons and they were both originally made in the Welsh language. So obviously Tempo Video had got permission to use S4C cartoons on this VHS and that's one reason why Fireman Sam was included as well. But the point I'm making is, I wasn't born before 1987 so I'm not 100% sure, but I really believe that this VHS was the first time Fireman Sam, in English anyway, was released to the British public. Because the original transmission air date for The Kite on BBC One was the 17th of November 1987. Now that's quite late in the year for 1987, there's only a few weeks of the year left at that point. And I don't know, I've just got this vibe that this VHS was released before then. And if you watch this video and notice the end credits, it doesn't mention Assisted by Mike Young at the end. Now all future home media releases do include Mike Young's credit. And those are the more familiar credits that we see with the rest of the 1987 and 88 episodes. I don't know, but there's just these hints that this VHS was the first time Fireman Sam was made available to the British public. And I'm quite sure that this VHS was released before Fireman Sam's first air date on BBC TV. I don't know about the Welsh version. That might have aired before this VHS, but I really believe that this VHS was released before Fireman Sam, in English, was released to the British public. And if so, that's a big point towards the history of the show. So thank you, Jamie boy, for reminding me about that. Sam lives at number three, Vale Road. His next door neighbor is Trevor Evans. Fire at three, Vale Road? Well, hang on a minute, sir. That's my house. Right, so before I move on to series five and how Hit Entertainment got their grubby little mitts onto the rights for Fireman Sam, I'm very briefly going to talk about audio cassettes and other Fireman Sam projects involving the original voice actor John Alderton. Now there were many Fireman Sam audio cassettes released over the years from the late 80s throughout the 90s and there was only one example of John Alderton recording an audio cassette and this was in 1987 so very early on when he just started doing the job and he recorded an audio cassette featuring four of Rob Lee's very early storybooks and then a few years later there was a PC game released for Fireman Sam in the in the 1990s now some sources say this game came out in 1999 some say 1998 and the end credits to the game mention 1994. I reckon 1994 must have been the year that John recorded his dialogue for this PC game. And that would make a lot of sense because it would have been around the same time that he was recording his lines for the last series of Fireman Sam he did. The last original series produced by Bumper Films. Because that was in 1994. There were many other Fireman Sam audio cassettes like I said. And they were narrated by a variety of different actors. One of them was the late great Welsh actor Victor Spinetti. Oui, monsieur. Do you have a rin? A rin? What are we having? Bread and cheese. Cheese. Very gastronomic. They call it the ploughman's lunch. Well, the ploughman can have it. Bicycle. Oh, I sure feels good to be back in the cell. Get you, you weak grill. He recorded some audio cassettes focusing on some of the early Buzz book stories, and he also recorded an official one for the BBC. In 1992, the BBC released a series of audio cassettes focusing on their popular children's programmes at the time. Postman Pat, Joshua Jones, Noddy, Paddington Bear, Fireman Sam, etc. All of these other ones 
were recorded by their official TV voice actors. Except for Fireman Sam. The Fireman Sam one was recorded by Victor Spinetti. He didn't manage to say any more because his mum had a hand firmly over his mouth. Oh, what a little chatterbox Norman can be, she said. But she looked very embarrassed. So, John Alderton, as I said before, was a very popular actor before he got the job on Fireman Sam. He was a very well-known TV actor. And even around the time that Fireman Sam had come out, he was starring in a popular drama series with his equally famous actress wife Pauline Collins called Forever Green. So maybe John Alderson was just too busy to narrate all these Fireman Sam audiobooks that were coming out. So anyway, Victor Spinetti recorded the official BBC one and he did quite a good job to be honest. He was an actual genuine Welshman and I was very lucky enough to see him live on a comedy stage play a couple of years before he sadly passed away. But he was phenomenal. He was very funny and great in this stage play. Another famous British actor that's no longer with us sadly recorded some Fireman Sam audio stories as well. And that actor was Jeremy Bullock. And his most famous role was playing the original Boba Fett in the original Star Wars trilogy. Now I believe his voice was dubbed later on by an American actor. But um, it's Jeremy Bullock playing the actual physical character of Boba Fett. And there was another actor called Nigel Pegram. And he recorded some Fireman Sam audio cassettes as well. Were well, all stories from the Buzz Book series. And of course, all of these audio cassettes featured the iconic original theme song sung by Moldwin Pope. When he hears the firebell chime, Fireman Sam is there on time. Putting on his coat and hat, less than seven seconds flat. And as a lot of you already know, there was many stage shows based on the series, performed by real theatre actors. Thanks, Trevor. Hey! What about me? I'm the gopher. What's a gopher, Sam? Well, uh, Norman's our little gopher, aren't you, Norman? Go for tea, go for toast, go for ever. And of course, while it's expected for this children's play to be a bit pantomime and cheesy, I have the same sort of issues with it that I do with Series 5 and the CGI series. Norman is incredibly stupid and annoying in this play and he needs rescuing at least twice. Elvis is far too stupid to be employed by the fire service and for some weird reason Station Officer Steele is obsessed with food in this play. Brigade dismiss. Break for coffee and biscuits, toast and marmalade. Oh, lovely. And cakes and donuts and declares. Oh, good idea. Some good Evans. Idea. Simon Fridlington. Stay. On duty. Oh, no. The rest drop off the bellows. It's not fair. Let's go. Ah, lunch sounds like a tip-top topping idea. Let's go. All right, all. The play does get some things right, like Sam's inventing hobby, Trevor flirting with Dillis and Bella, Dillis's outdated xenophobia, but it's still very weird. I mean, there's a scene where Sam has made a Guy Fawkes dummy to resemble Norman Price, which they're going to burn on the bonfire. Do they hate this kid that much? Old, it? Ready for lunch! No, oh, I mean action, Station Officer Steel, sir. Oh, good idea, sir. So Evans! Good idea. Control yourself, right? Right. I Officers. don't care what Granny says. As brigade cook, you're fired. Oh, thank you, sir. It's kind of promotion, is it? No, I'm in my egg. Oh, real, oh, real. A Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Where is the little brat? No, man. Besides, Trevor told me, and my mum says Trevor knows all about the birds and the bees. It's a second-hand hot dog. <laughs> Mamma mia, Mrs. Price, you're pinching my bottom. A rocket! Trevor, darling, is Bella! Just coming to join you right away, my lovely. <laughs> you might end up as the guy. I don't think my mammy would like that, Fireman Sam. I wouldn't count on that, boy, oh. So, after the fourth series, third series in technical terms, had finished in 1994, there was no more Fireman Sam episodes produced by Bumper Films. 
The franchise itself was still very much in the public eye, as toys, fortnightly magazines and annuals were still produced throughout the 1990s and into the early 2000s. As for bumper films, they began producing a new series in 1998 called Star Hill Ponies. With the Star Hill Ponies, you can never be lonely. Star Hill Ponies will always be with you. <laughs> but like Joshua Jones, that really didn't take off that well. Rob Lee had no creative involvement with Star Hill Ponies and Hennigan and Lawson didn't compose the music either. The only folk that were connected to Star Hill Ponies with Fireman Sam and Joshua Jones were the animators themselves at Bumper Films. I've always wanted a cactus called Freddy. However, there are characters in this show that are clearly inspired by ones in Joshua and Sam. Pompous Mrs. Horace Morris is similar to Basil Steele and Wilton Cashmore, Accident-prone shopkeeper Ambrose Higgins is like a mixture of Elvis and Spanner. 